So the next kinds of questions we want to have a look at are ones that include, why is my board not working? Here we go. Ones that include rational numbers and irrational numbers. And we've talked about rational numbers and irrational numbers before, but just as a bit of a reminder, rational numbers are ones that you can express as fractions, where A and B are integers. Irrational numbers can't be expressed in this way. Just in terms of some of these numbers you might see, these letters, if you see the letter Q written like this, that means the rational numbers. <laughs> the Q comes from the word quotient, and quotient means fraction. So that's why these are called the rational numbers represented by Q. We have the real numbers, which are R, which are just all the numbers. The natural numbers, I think we talked about before, those are the, the positive integers, just the counting numbers. And the integers, which is Z, are just positive and negative whole numbers. Okay? So let's have a look at this question. It says, use proof by contradiction to show that, given a rational number A and an irrational number B, A minus B is irrational. So actually, Chaz, you said, could we just say, assume that the statement is not true? This one, you've got to be really careful, because it's not obvious what not true means of that statement. Because this one, we've got, and if A is uh, rational and B is irrational, then something else. So it's an if this, then this. What did we do before to do the opposite of an if this, then this? If this, then not this. So we are going to assume, and again, for contradiction, but you don't need to write that for contradiction if you're worried about your pen running out of ink, i.e. you're lazy and you don't want to do much writing. So we're going to assume that given a rational number A, and irrational number b, a minus b is rational. So we're going to assume that that thing is true, which we know is not true, because that's the thing we're trying to prove the opposite of. Now, we know how to write rational numbers. We can't write irrational numbers. So I'm not going to do anything to B. But I can say that as A is rational, A could be equal to, I'm not going to use B because I've already got that. I'm going to use two other letters. I'm going to say that A is equal to C and D. And as a minus B is rational. A minus B we could call E over F. I'm just where C, D, E, and F are integers. I've just pulled them out. I've just made them up because I was running out of letters. I had, I've already got A and B, so I used C, D, E, and F. I could have used P, Q. If you're, yeah, you're thinking that A minus B is going to be C minus D minus B. But we don't know anything about B. We want to try and do some kind of contradiction. But we can't put two letters for B because B is irrational. So we can't do anything to B because it's the irrational one. Watch how I do it, and then you'll see why we had to do it in this way, OK? So we now know that these two things are rational. What are we actually trying to prove? We're trying to make something go wrong here. So what do you think I could do with these two statements if I know that A is equal to this and A minus B is equal to this? Yeah, I can't write a rational number as a fraction, an irrational number as a fraction. So what's my irrational number in this whole situation? B. So I'm going to try and find what B is equal to. And I'm hoping that there's going to be something that goes wrong. At the moment, B is irrational. If I can show that B is rational, then it's broken. And then the statement at the top of the page is true. So because A is equal to this and A minus B is equal to this, I'm going to try and find B. Rearranging this one that I've got here, what is B equal to? So A minus B over 
A minus E over F. And A is a rational number, which is C over D. So we've got C over D minus E over F. Doing fractions here, we get CF minus DE over DF, which is rational because I've got an integer times an integer minus an integer times an integer divided by an integer times an integer. In other words, I have an integer divided by an integer, which is a rational number, which is a contradiction to what we said, because we said that the B was an irrational number. So what we've essentially said here is that if A is rational and A minus B is rational, B must also be rational, which is a contradiction to what was happening. So th let's just write that down. This is rational. You could say because it's integers divided by integers. This is rational because there is an integer divided by an integer. This contradicts that B is irrational. Hence, our original statement is true. I'm taking some of Chaz's advice here, and I'm going to try and save a bit of time. We can say the original statement is true because it's just copying it. We can't say it's false because it's not obvious at the beginning what that means. So this rational, irrational stuff is tough. This is, in, this is actually in like university level maths. This is usually like one of the first modules you do at university level maths of proof. So if you find it confusing, it is. Like it's, it's a, a different way of looking at things. But I want to just quickly go through this, this logic step one more time. So to begin with, we had a statement that was if A, then B. So the opposite of that was if A, then not B. B. That was for what our assumptions were going to be. So we assumed that given a rational number A and an irrational number B, A minus B is rational. We did the opposite of what they told us. We can't do anything to do with irrational numbers because we can't write them down. But because I knew that A was rational, I could say it was C over D. Because I knew that A minus B is rational, I could say that it was E over F, where C, D, E, and F were integers. I found out what B was by rearranging this. And B turned out to be a rational number, which contradicted the fact that we said that B was irrational. And because it contradicted that fact, it meant that the original statement was true. We're going to do one more irrationality proof, and then we'll take a break to do a bit of practice and just like thinking about some of these questions that we've got here, OK? Yes. Yes, exactly. Because of this thing here that we wrote on the previous page, because the thing that we negated we thought was true, because it was wrong, the thing that we negated, the original statement was true. What is that noise? It's crazy. OK, this is probably one of the most famous proofs that you will come across. Everyone who does maths at university will know this proof. Everyone will be like, oh, prove that root 2 is irrational. And there are so many ways of proving that root 2 is irrational. That's why people really like this, because there's not just one way of doing this. This is probably the most famous way, is by proof by contradiction. But there are so many ways of proving that root 2 is irrational. And this is the way that I think is the most famous here. So again, I've got that reminder about what rational numbers are. You might have remembered at the beginning that rational numbers can be expressed in the form a over b, where they're integers. But I said something else about them. What did I say on that original page about rational numbers when it's written as a over b? Have a look on the, your pages. What did it say, I think, on the second page about rational numbers, about a and b? They're both integers, and their highest common factor is 1. In other words, a over b is a fraction in its lowest terms. That's going to be important for this one here. So we're going to prove that the square root of 2 is irrational. 
So we are going to start off by assuming for contradiction, because we don't really like dealing with irrational numbers, that the square root of 2 is rational. We're going to assume that the opposite is true here, which means that the square root of 2 is going to be equal to a over b, where a and b are integers, and a over b is, or we should say, and they have no common factors and have no other common factors than 1. And then we'll do some maths to it and see what happens. So we can times it by b. I think I might do something before I times it by b to get rid of any of the irrational stuff that's going on here. I'm going to square it. So I'm going to just now start doing some math. So I get 2 equals a squared over b squared. So I get 2b squared is equal to a squared. Chaz? We're not trying to solve it for a squared. We're just trying to do some maths to it and find out what's going to go on here because I want to contradict something that's written up here. So how can you get to be a and b? To find out what b is, I, will, I can find out what b is as well. Okay. It's just easier to find out what a is because it's in the numerator. So what kind of number is a squared? Okay. It's an integer. But we knew it was an integer because a was already an integer. It's even. It's even. How do you know it's even? Pardon? It's even because you're, it's equal to something multiplied by 2. Because a squared is equal to b squared times 2, so a squared is even because it's, multi because it's equal to b times 2. So a squared is even, which means a is even. Because a is even, we could now say a is equal to 2k. What do you think I'm going to do next? Substitute. I'm going to substitute it in. So I'm going to say that 2b squared is equal to 2k squared. So I have 2b squared is 4k squared. In other words, b squared is 2k squared. What does this tell us? It tells us that b, is, b squared is even, which means that b is even. What's the problem with b being even? Say that. Both a and b are not supposed to be even. Why can't both a and b be even in our assumption? Because they, would have a, they, could, they wouldn't be a fraction in the lowest terms, a over b, because they would both be even numbers. And it wouldn't be in its simplest form, which goes against our contradiction. Therefore, root 2 is irrational. So let's just write that down. So b squared is even. And b is therefore even. So both a and b are even. meaning a over b, or meaning they have a common factor. Slash, we could say a over b is not in its lowest terms. Hence, root 2 is irrational. I'm not trying to pretend to you this is easy. This will be something that you will find easier, but the first time we do this kind of stuff, it's like, whoa, there's a lot of stuff going on here. How do I even know about like what, what are the bits I'm meant to be doing? 
So this is the irrationality proof for root two. It's a really, really famous one. So I'm just going to go through it one more time just to think about all the things we did here. We did the opposite bit for the assumption. Even if you can't do this question, please just get one out of the, one out of the four marks by just saying that first sentence. Is that one mark? Yeah. Doing the op saying the opposite is a mark. Don't say the statement is not true. Okay? Say, assume that root 2 is rational. Great. You'll get another mark for saying that rational numbers can be written as A over B. You don't necessarily need to have this, but I think it's important for the contradiction that we have. This is the bit that's harder. You rearrange it. You find out that A squared is even, which means that A must be even. And we actually did a proof of that earlier on, that if A squared is even, then A must be even. But because A is even, we can replace it with 2K. 2k squared gave us 4k squared, which means b squared is 2k squared, which means b squared is even, which means that b is even. Both a and b are even, which means that the fraction is not in its lowest terms. They have a highest common factor that is more than 1. So we contradicted our definition of a rational number, which means that the square root of 2 is irrational. And at the end of the day, you can just memorize this proof. If you have to, just have it on a card just before you go in but it hopefully should make sense to us. And we're going to do a bit of a pause here and do some practice questions ourselves.